Okay, good morning, everybody. Hi, and good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is a Friday already, September 15, 2017. It's our the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows. Okay? Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows. It is it is the day when we commemorate the um, the uh, life of Our Lady, which was very much steeped in uh, in suffering, plenty of suffering. Okay, and uh, there are seven sorrows that have been identified. You know, there's a devotion, the seven sorrows of Our Lady, that were identified as the highlights of Our Lady's suffering throughout her life. Now today. Uh, in this feast, uh, just like in several other feasts, there are, uh, you, you can have a choice of two Gospels to read. Okay? Now I thought, I thought we will uh, read today both Gospels okay? and comment on both because they're short anyway. And, uh, and I want to read both because uh, we, we could see from these two readings uh, the connection, the connections between Our Lady's uh, sufferings. Okay, the first one comes from St. John, chapter 19, verses 25 to 27. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and a disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. Then the other gospel is from St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 33 to 35. Jesus' father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. So, these two Gospels, if you put them together, put them together, um, more or less uh, shows us how Our Lady suffered from beginning to end. From the very beginning of her life. Imagine Our Lady uh, and St. Joseph so happy and joyful for the birth of their son. Right? The, Jesus just was born. And you see how happy mothers and parents are every time a baby is born to their families. Right? They're so happy. Right? For the gift of, of life in their family. Yet, only eight days after the birth of Jesus, while they're still all in that spirit of... Uh, jubilation uh, uh, of the life uh, birth of Jesus they are told this boy Mary this boy you brought into the world is going to cause you pain is going to cause you uh, uh, um, sadness okay? on account of this boy a sword shall pierce your soul right a soldier so our lady that's the first sorrow of our lady right what are the seven? Let's name all the seven sorrows. So that was the first one. Okay? That was the first one. The prophecy of Simeon about how uh, Jesus was going to, uh, the, the birth of Jesus was going to affect the very life of Our Lady. Um, the second sorrow is the flight into Egypt. Right? When they were told hastily, go, go, go into Egypt. You know, Joseph, bring, the, bring your wife and, uh, and child to, to Egypt because Herod was, is going to kill him. The third is when Jesus got lost in the temple. Okay? When Our Lady said, you know, your father and I have been looking for you. Okay? Why did you do this? Okay? Our Lady must have been so sad losing Jesus okay? and not knowing uh, where he was. She must have felt so responsible for Jesus that, you know, uh, she never thought such a thing could happen. Right? And then, fast forward to his crucifixion. Okay? When our Lord uh, meets her, our lady, during the, the, the carrying of the cross. Okay? When our lady meets him face to face. Right? 
uh, that must have been a very very painful uh, situation right when our lady saw Jesus suffering carrying his cross and of course all throughout the crucifixion then the other sorrow was when she was already standing right there at the foot of the cross right which is the other gospel right standing by the cross where his mother and his mother's sister etc see it must have been very painful for our lady to be seeing our Lord dying on the cross there, suffering with all the nails piercing his his flesh, which is her flesh. See? It's why our lady is very much intimately connected to the sufferings of our Lord, because our Lord's body came from her. See? That is flesh of her flesh that is pierced and pinned to the cross by those nails and bruised and wounded by all of those scourgings and all of those blows and all of those insults and 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 uh, wounds that were caused by uh, all of the punishment that Jesus was given must have been very tough but our lady was strong right our lady was strong she stood by our lord suffering with him okay? that is why she she's called the corredemptrix see she redeemed us from our sins together with our lord right right there at the foot of the cross. And then the other sorrow was when she received the body of Jesus, the dead body of Jesus already. Okay? Uh, the image that comes to my mind all the time is, the, is that last scene from The Passion of the Christ, right? Uh, that, that movie, The Passion. Okay? I just, every time I imagine that, 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 that scene, I, I get very moved, see, at the way uh, our Lady must have suffered, uh, you know, holding the dead body of Jesus. Then the other sorrow, the seventh sorrow, was the, the burial of Jesus. Okay? Uh, as the saying goes, uh, no parent should ever bury uh, his or her child. So uh, that must have been a very real, uh, difficult situation for, for Our Lady okay? to bury Jesus. So those are the seven sorrows. Now, uh, our, how did Our Lady react all the time to all of these things throughout her life from the moment that Simeon told her, you're going to suffer all throughout your life? See? Our Lady, well, you know, uh, hang on to her initial uh, uh, fiat when she told our Lord, I mean the angel, right? Fiat voluntas tua secut in cello et in terra, right? Fiat, thy will be done. See, thy will be done. And that's what we say also in the Our Father now, right? Fiat, thy will be done. And Our Lady, from the very beginning, already accepted the fact that she was going to have a difficult life, that she was going to suffer. And such was her fate. Now, so our sorrowful mother suffered all throughout her life. And all of her sufferings were connected to Jesus. They were all connected to her motherhood. They were all connected to the fact that she accepted her vocation to be the mother of Jesus, the mother of the Messiah, the mother of the second person of the Blessed Trinity. Okay, So that is the very root of her uh, sufferings. Everything connected to Jesus. Everything connected to uh, Jesus' mission which is to save souls. Okay? So the sufferings of Our Lady are connected to that. Now, so I have a question for you. How does one console Our Lady? How would you console Our Lady knowing that she has suffered all of these things? How are we going to console her? Reparation. Reparation eh? for sins. How? We have to make reparation for sins. Yeah, that's right. We have to have make reparation for sin. How do we do that? What What are the things that we can do? Huh? Yeah, sacrifice. Sacrifice. Okay. Offer sacrifices. Okay. Yes, Shavel. Hmm? More, rosaries. more rosaries okay more rosaries 
Let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. And this is the way that I would uh, propose it to everybody. Right? If we want to console our lady, we have to take care of everything related to her son, Jesus. Because remember, the very reason for our lady's entire being, the very reason for our lady's vocation was Jesus. Okay? Jesus. She lived for Jesus. Everything was connected to Jesus' mission. So, and that mission was also the same thing that caused her sorrow. So if we want to console Our Lady, we have to take care of Jesus. We have to take care that Jesus does not suffer more. We have to take care that Jesus does not go through any more agony and suffering. right? So that she herself, her own agony and suffering would be minimized, would be diminished. Right? And let us do everything that would be the opposite of whatever caused our Lord to suffer. Okay? So concretely, what can we do? Well, number one, number one, uh, Joseph already said, make reparation for sin. That is very good. Right? And that's exactly what she also told the children of Fatima. Remember? What she said was, you got to offer plenty of sacrifice for sinners. So praying for sinners is a very good way to console our lady. Okay? To pray for the conversion of sinners. But before we can even pray for the conversion of sinners, let us first resolve that we ourselves, we ourselves avoid sin. Okay? That we ourselves should always have that disposition of staying away from sin. Not only avoiding sin itself, but avoiding even the mere occasions of sin. Not even putting ourselves in situations when we can commit sin. Okay? So we have to start from there. They pray for sinners and we ourselves resolve that we should avoid sin and avoid the, uh, the uh, occasions of sin. Number two, what's another way that we can console our lady? Still connected to sin, we may be avoiding sin. But the other beautiful thing we can frequent is confession. Confession, which is connected to sinning, right? It's connected to sinning. So let us make it a habit to make a very good confession often, often. And let's, let's make it a habit. Let's really make it a habit. Two things that I would recommend is, number one, put it on your schedule. Make it a habit that every so often within a month, some people go once a month, some people go twice a month. In our case, our family, we go once a week to confession. And, and besides the frequency, let us also strive to improve our confessions all the time, to go deeper and deeper in our examination of conscience and to, to help ourselves to really examine what things we may be offending our Lord in. And so that we can little by little really root out all of those bad tendencies. Okay? And confession helps in that. Making a good examination of conscience helps in that. Number three, recommendation to console Our Lady. Number three, take care of the Eucharist. The Eucharist is... <laughs> our Lord, our Lord's presence in the Eucharist has been very much abused in this last decades <laughs> With all of these allowances that uh, that uh, we have been given uh, in the manner of reception of the Blessed Sacrament, so many abuses are being committed every day. Every day. Our Lord is being abused in the Holy Eucharist, my friends. Every day. Let's take care of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. Number one, let's take care of the dispositions we have when we receive our Lord. Okay? Do we receive our Lord with devotion? Do we receive our Lord with love? In the first place, do we receive our Lord free of mortal sin? Okay? Let, us not, let us not in any way even attempt to approach our Lord if we are conscious of the fact that we have mortal sin. 
Este, every sin we commit, we are crucifying our Lord again on that cross. So if you want to make our lady sad, you want to make your mother sad, sin is the surest way to make that happen. And the surest way to console her would be to avoid committing sin and not to approach Jesus, not even to come close to Jesus if we have mortal sin. Okay? Go to confession first before receiving our Lord. And then let's take care of the dispositions of how we receive Him. Hmm? From, from the piety with which we approach the sacrament of Holy Communion and the way that we treat our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Even the, the, the simple genuflections we make in front of the tabernacle are a very, very good sign of consolation, a very good way to console our Lord waiting in the tabernacle and a good way to console our lady, to show our lady that we love Jesus, that we don't want to make him suffer more. Okay? Even that simple genuflection you make in front of the tabernacle is consolation enough. It assures our lady that you want to take care of Jesus. Okay? So, those are the things that we uh, can do. And in today's, uh, in today's feast, I would also encourage you, folks, to uh, pick up a copy of Stabat Mater, okay? the beautiful 13th century hymn uh, about, um, about Our Lady's uh, sorrows and Our Lady's suffering. Okay? And, and to end, I would just like to read a few parts of that uh, hymn, which should put us in a very good disposition today to accompany Our Lady in her sufferings. Is there one who would weep, whelmed in miseries so deep, Christ's dear mother to behold? Can the human heart refrain from partaking in her pain, in that mother's pain untold? O oh, sweet mother, <clears throat> font of love, Touch my spirit from above. Make my heart with yours accord. Make me feel as you have felt. Make my soul to glow and melt with the love of Christ my Lord. Holy Mother, pierce me through. In my heart each wound renew of my Savior crucified. Let me share with you his pain. Who for all our sins was slain? Who for me in torments died? And the prayer goes on and on. But today is a beautiful day to at least read this uh, Stabat Mater hymn. And it's available on the internet. You can just Google it, Stabat Mater. Okay? The spelling is that, by the way. There you go, Stabat Mater. Matter. Oh, again, it's reverse. <laughs> but anyway, you get the point. Stop at matter. It's a very nice prayer to contemplate on today to uh, help uh, us understand how we can console Our Lady. So, folks, that's it for today on Catholic Best Practices with Jake Leachko on a Friday, September 15, 2017. We'll see you all again next time. We're off to Mass. Have a good weekend, everybody. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's a good, we have guests tomorrow, so. Okay, thank you. Uh, have a nice day. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye, everybody. And don't forget to share these videos. Uh, we're being watched all over the world. You know, I already, I already started asking for likes on the page, Catholic uh, Best Practices. Um, so... Um, uh, I'd appreciate if you can share it. Uh, people have been telling me that um, they've been learning plenty of things through these videos. So that's good. And, uh, you know, I'm just sharing. We, 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 do all, we do these things every morning anyway. So I thought, let's film it. Let's share it so that anybody who might want to benefit from it can. Okay. Thank you, folks. See you. Bye. Bye.